It's been a few months since I've had my gynecomastia surgery and in today's video I want to give you advice from my own personal experience with the surgery to help you better understand things to think about prior to getting the surgery yourself. So like I said at the beginning of this video, I had gynecomastia surgery a few months ago, and today I wanna to give my personal advice on ways that you can better prepare yourself to go into gynecomastia surgery and things that either I did or wish I had done going into the surgery to better prepare myself. So the first piece of advice I would give for gyno surgery and getting prepared for the surgery is to be in the best shape you possibly can. I mentioned this in my cost of gynecomastia surgery video where I talk about how much I spent and some of the things I did prior. I really think this is beneficial, not only for those who are looking to get the surgery, but just if you have gynecomastia in general, getting in the best shape you possibly can prior to the surgery or just in general by losing weight and putting on some muscle, especially in the chest and shoulder area, will one, help boost your confidence overall because when you put on some muscle and lose some weight, it can potentially remove some of the fat that might exist in your chest and make the gynecomastia not look so severe and it will help when you're going into the surgery because having lost that weight can help reduce the chance that your surgeon has to do extra liposuction or any at all on your chest, which obviously if you get liposuction, that causes another incision other than just the incision that happens on your nipple to remove the gland. So getting in the best shape possible before the surgery can help one, reduce the cost potentially if liposuction is no longer on the table because you've lost that weight and don't have extra fat on your chest and then two can help reduce the overall amount of incisions or scarring that you'll have post-surgery. The second thing that I believe will prepare you for the gynecomastia surgery is just learning everything you can, one about gynecomastia and then also about the gynecomastia surgery and its process. So for me, this advice was really helpful in going into the surgery. I had gynecomastia for 15 plus years, so I had a lot of time to dwell on it, how much I didn't like it, what were ways that I could get rid of it naturally, how much did the surgery cost, what goes in the surgery. I watched other people's videos on YouTube on experiences with the surgery, post-surgery, pre-surgery, all of that. And all I have to say is that was probably one of the best things that I had going into the surgery, especially my consultation, because one, just knowing what gynecomastia is and what causes it and the different levels of gynecomastia really helped me in better understanding what did I want for myself going into that surgery and what did I know would personally make me happy when it comes to the different types of surgery and how aggressive it gets with the surgery. And what I mean by that is some surgeons will look at your chest and say, I think you're like a grade one, it's pretty uh, mild. So I'm just gonna do liposuction, trying to remove some of the fat below and try and have maybe your nipples point more downward so that the puffiness doesn't appear to be as severe. Um, and then it goes into as far as removing gland as well as large amounts of fat, which that would be like a grade three, extremely severe. You see a lot of people will have like a scar across maybe their entire chest to help remove whatever's going on under there because it was so severe. But all of that time of learning all of that and the different procedures that surgeons went through, recommendations they did, what the different grades of gynecomastia even were and where I was personally at on that spectrum of gynecomastia helped me go in with one, better knowledge, and two, being able to talk and work with my surgeon to say, look, here's your professional opinion, but here's my personal experience with it and what I know will make me the happiest possible long term. So learning about gynecomastia, the different causes of gynecomastia, and the different ways gynecomastia is removed, and how extensive that may be, is really beneficial when going in to get the surgery. And with talking about learning more about gynecomastia and the surgery and the overall process, and where you might be on the gynecomastia spectrum, my last point of advice or last tip is just that realize everyone's gynecomastia experience and their results are gonna be completely different than yours. Everyone's gynecomastia is different. 
even if your chest looks the exact same as someone else's and you say, man, like my gynecomastia looks just like theirs, that doesn't mean your results are gonna be the exact same. There's so many variables that play into how your results will be from how large is the glandular tissue actually underneath the chest. Have you done anything, like I said in the first tip, with exercise? How is your genetic makeup? How does your body respond to an extreme evasive surgery where you're getting uh, something completely removed from your chest and you're having the surgeon dig in with like a liposuction thing and just taking all that fat out? Like, I had no idea how my body was gonna respond to that because I've never had a major surgery. And just because patient A had a good result with their surgery doesn't mean that I'm gonna have the exact same result. There's so many factors that go into play and I wanna just give this advice of saying, when you go in, really understand, like go in knowing that your results might not be the ideal thing you want. Like I've said, I've had gynecomastia or I had gynecomastia for 15 plus years. And through all those years, I always looked at like guys' chests and thought like, this would be the ideal chest for me. Like if my nipple looked exactly like that, it was like small and flat and like you couldn't see it in a shirt. And it would like my chest had this great kind of contour to it. But the thing is, is that isn't always the case. And just because I look at all these surgeons results and see like how people's chest looks, that does not mean my chest will look exactly like that. Now, granted, when you do get the surgery and you remove the gland and have liposuction and remove some fat from your chest, your chest will look better than it did before. It will be smaller, it'll look better in your shirts, your nipples will not be puffy anymore, but this doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to have this ideal looking chest that maybe you've kind of fantasized about for however many years you've had gynecomastia. And so going in just with that mindset of knowing that, hey, my results might not be exactly perfect, like the perfection of the male chest, but they will be better than what they were prior. And for me, I'm happy with that. And going in with that mindset into my surgery and even post-surgery of understanding that every single gynecomastia experience is different and the results are different really helped set me up to be happy about my results that I've had so far and have the most successful post-surgery experience possible because I didn't compare myself to patient A or patient B or patient C who also had gynecomastia and had these specific results, realizing that I'm nothing like those three people and I just need to be happy with how my things are progressing with my chest and my gynecomastia surgery recovery. And if you really aren't satisfied or there truly is something that went wrong with your surgery, that's where your surgeon comes into play. Your surgeon is an asset that you should use continuously. You paid them to be the professional to remove the gynecomastia. They should also be the professional that you go to afterwards to make sure that everything is going correctly or right with your surgery and the recovery and that you are truly happy with the results that you have from your surgery. So that's probably my biggest thing is use your surgeon literally nonstop if you have to, to make sure that things are going correctly. It's great watching videos like this and going online and seeing how other people had with the results and experiences and the goods and the bads up and down. But like I said, every experience is, it's unique to its own person, and your surgeon is gonna be the person who was literally removing the gyno from you and knows your situation specifically. So use them as a huge asset, and like I said, just go in with that mindset of knowing my situation is unique to me and my result will be unique to me. So that's it for my advice for the gynecomastia surgery and my own personal experience. I know I was kind of rambling there with it. I didn't really know how to do this video, but I thought it would be good to give my advice on saying, hey, try and get in shape, learn about gynecomastia, and then just know that your experience is gonna be unique to you. So I hope you guys like this. If you did, hit that like button. Leave a comment below if you think there's any tip of advice you wish you could give someone going into gynecomastia surgery or just having gynecomastia at all. And as always, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get updates on when I'm uploading my next video. Thanks for watching.